Hello, fine people, and thank you for tuning in to another one of these physical material series tutorials. In this one, we'll be creating this translucent looking plastic material that you see on this cup here. And we'd like to thank Tom for sacrificing a couple of his cups for this photo shoot. Because you know, whenever you're creating materials, it's always good to have solid visual references in front of you. So if we just quickly analyze what we see, we can probably gather that this is a green plastic material of sorts. The reflections look kind of rougher-ish. And there's a strong translucent component to the material. So there's probably going to be some fiddling with some form of scattering here. And by and large, that's kind of all that there is to it. There's bumps and bruises on the cup as well, yes, but we won't really worry about those since we already know how to use bump maps at this point. And so that's just extra detailing there. So with all that said, how about we go to work here? Let's create a new Corona physical material and let's apply it to our glass object. All right. Now let's first make sure our metalness mode is set correctly. This is a plastic material. So non-metal is the option we're going to going to want to go with. Now, the main feature for this material is probably going to be that translucent look. And if we enable subsurface scattering for our material here, okay, and if we increase its radius a bit here, all right, well, you'll see that, yes, we're getting that diffuse-like translucent look uh, where the light is passing through the cup. But if we compare this effect to the reference image, well, you'll probably notice that our plastic cup here looks a bit more refractive than what we have in front of us in the interactive render. So subsurface scattering is going to be too diffuse for us here. Or in other words, the light coming through the cup like this is just too spread out. It's too rough looking, if you will. Our reference looks more refractive than what we got here right now. And that's basically because the subsurface scattering option here is a better fit for thicker opaque materials such as marble or skin and not so much for these really translucent looking materials. OK, so what that means is we won't be relying on subsurface scattering for this material. And instead, we're going to make this material be a refractive material okay so immediately you can kind of see that this is now looking a bit more like it should now yes the material is refractive right uh, but uh, it, it is super rough at the same time so it's not really glass like at all as you can see it's way rougher than that and that's exactly what we want right now, we could lower the glossiness down a little bit. So maybe if we lower it down to 0 0.6, let's see how that's looking. OK, that's not that bad, but maybe we could lower it even further. So maybe we can lower it down to 0 0.4 or so. OK, so that's looking sort of good there. But now we will we'll, we will want to tweak the color a bit because our reference was, well, green, right? So because we are dealing with a refractive object, adjusting the base color here really won't do much for us here, which means we'll have to get that color in through different means. And so we're going to do that in a very physical way by enabling volumetric scattering. OK. Now, the first parameter we'll want to tweak here is the absorption parameter. So we're going to give it a nice greenish color. OK, so we're going to set the hue to be this sort of greenish hue. And then we're really going to up the saturation quite considerably. So something like this. And then as far as the value, maybe we could drop it down a little bit just so we get this nice green color. OK, now alternatively, what we could also do is we could sample the color directly from a reference image. But I think the green we've dialed in here is going to work just fine for us. So let's just go with it. Let's hit OK. And so as you'll notice, nothing changed in the interactive render. And that is because with absorption, we need to dial in the distance as well. Now, when dialing in the distance, there's going to be some trial and error here. And we're just going to try and make the result look good. So at a value of 3.0, we're kind of getting there. But maybe we could lower it even further. Let's try 2.0. 
all right kind of there already let's lower it down even further all right that's kind of looking pretty good let's lower it just a little bit more let's lower it down to 0 0.8 all right and i think this looks kind of good all right now the way absorption works is it basically defines the color of the ray that's traveling through the surface and with the uh, distance parameter you're basically defining at the distance at which that absorption will be exactly that color that you've specified okay now if a ray is going to travel further into the object itself so basically if it'll travel deeper than the distance you've specified here okay well then that ray will get even more and more absorbed than it already is and it'll do that until it gets completely absorbed all right and at that point your material will start looking very dark and do note this is exactly how these things happen in the real world as well right so the material is looking kind of great here but we'll still want to tweak the scattering color because the scattering color will basically enable volumetric slash subsurface scattering uh, which will add even more realism to our material here because now when the ray uh, is going to bounce around inside our material its color will get multiplied with the color we set here with the scattering color parameter okay and again this is physically accurate behavior so let's take our absorption color and let's just copy it into the scattering color slot all right and so that's looking kind of cool but i think we could adjust the scattering color a little bit here um and this is kind of the color that is inside of our material of our object here so let's maybe set it to something a bit more greener so let's up the hue to maybe 79 or so and we could also up the value here a little bit maybe to 160 or so maybe we can lower it just a little bit okay and so immediately you're going to notice that this material is really starting to look like our reference it is green it is nicely translucent and that translucency is sort of green tinted as well in a way so our material here if we compare it to our reference you can immediately see that it's behaving much the same as the reference now with translucent materials such as this one it's always a good idea to emphasize the translucency a bit to have a better idea of how it behaves it's also useful to kind of mimic the lighting scenario from your references it doesn't have to be too precise although you know if you really get the lighting to match you'll really be able to compare how your material matches to the reference material in great detail but in our case here we'll just do a crude approximation here so we'll just switch to another camera uh, so that the cup is now in front of the window as it was in the reference right and to further emphasize the translucency effect we have a small corona light in the shape of a sphere right behind our cup here and if we enable it well now you can kind of really see how that translucency behaves it is kind of exaggerated yes but if we compare it to the photo tom took of his cup you can notice that it's behaving very similarly to the real world thing again though this is just a crude approximation of the setup in the image if we really wanted to pretty much create an identical material well, we'd probably spend a lot more time on getting a similar lighting scenario going just so we can make sure that our material is behaving as close as possible to the real thing. But at that point, you know, you're just trying to be creative. You're dialing in the details and you're hunting for that perfection. The workflow then consists of you tweaking pretty much the same parameters we've tweaked here. Now, one thing to maybe still note here is that these types of plastic cups typically have a glossy or clear coat to them that makes them appear a bit more shiny. And to set that up, well, you just need to enable the clear coat layer, okay? Maybe you drop the amount down to 0 0.7 or so. Just so you know, it, it appears like the clear coat is not quite as thick. It's a bit less reflective and then maybe you add just a pinch of roughness to it all okay but again at this point you're being creative and you're 
detailing things. As far as this tutorial goes, well, hopefully you now have a basic idea of how to set up similar plastic materials. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you've learned something new. And as always, take care, good people.